Christine, uh, in your function as the Executive Secretary of the Global Forum for Rural Advisory Services, short GFRAS, you are at the Symposium on Rural Advisory Services for ARD in Bonn right now. The consultation has just finished now, uh, but maybe you can give us a bit of a brief account on what the main outcomes of that day were. Yes, well the point of the symposium today was to give a sort of state of what's going on in rural advisory services today and especially to discuss issues of sustainability. So we presented some of these issues uh, from the GFROS perspective and also we presented five key areas where we need to focus in order to mobilize the potential of advisory services. We followed this with a panel discussion and some other practical uh, discussions as well, presentations and then concluded pretty much that there's a lot of interest to revitalize and strengthen advisory services and there's also a lot of ways we need to do so. Is there any concrete points that uh, you guys decided to follow through with? Well, I think uh, BMZ and GIZ are going to take up some of the discussions into their strategy development. Um, so that's one of, one of the ways. GFROS, of course, holds uh, continual forums on the issue and we'll also discuss it on those things at our annual meeting, for instance. We'll take some ideas maybe to the GCARD, the Global Conference on Agricultural Research for Development in Uruguay. I read that you're also preparing a paper on the role of advisory services that's just been put online for people to give input and so forth. And uh, that's a preparation for the GCAR at the conference. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the process and what this paper is all about. Yes, that's true. There's actually, uh, I think, a hot uh, survey discussion debate going on right now about the paper, which, as you said, we just posted and have sent around to different stakeholders around the world. Uh, we've, we've published a position paper on the capacities that are needed to strengthen extension and advisory services. We think they have new roles to play today as a result of the new challenges around the world. So this paper discusses what capacities are needed at the individual level, organizational level, and also at system level. And I think it's pretty important because it really gets into the action point. Who is going to do what to strengthen these capacities and at what level? At the national level, at the regional level, and also at the global level. Yeah, we hear usually quite, quite a lot about capacities being needed and then they are sort of sucked up from other parts of is there any any concrete ideas already where the capacities could come from and obviously who's financing it, but maybe it's more an issue of where the capacities could be coming from? Yes, well, we definitely do some finger pointing about who could play a role. Um, we talk about national governments. Uh, we talk about management facilitators, for instance. Uh, we talk about what's the role of, of forums such as FARA of development partners such as CTA. Uh, some of the practical actions that we talk about are, are to do with curricula, for instance, just doing an analysis of the agricultural innovation system and seeing what the capacities are needed. So you can find out more on our website, of course, what the actual points are. Uh, gender is also of particular interest, and you've been looking into that as well. Where do you see the critical junction of gender advisory services and innovation systems? Well, I think it's almost impossible to talk about agriculture and even to talk about extension without bringing in the issues of gender and without thinking what are the different needs of men and women, farmers and rural producers, and what access do both men and women have? Of course, we see that there's differences, like if you provide input to a woman farmer, her productivity is actually more likely to be higher than a male farmer for whatever reason, and so we know that it's it makes sense uh, investment-wise to invest in female farmers, um, but also, of course, there's, there's the human rights of equal access to resources that's an, also an issue. So what GFROS has done to put this into action is we've actually just developed a working group. GFROS uh, uses working groups to actually put into action some of our different uh, activities that we're working on. We met in Copenhagen last week with a, a group of about 15 experts to say what are the main issues, what are the gaps, the things that we don't know about women's access to extension services. What will happen next is that we'll put together some recommendations for the GFROS steering committee of how we can actually move forward and take action on those recommendations. Excuse my ignorance on this point, but I, I'm always wondering how do you 
invest into a female farmer. You know, I mean, it's you on a very high level, <laughs> but maybe you can break that down because we have other people watching the interview as well. Yeah. Yes, that's a very that's a very good question. I mean, if the, I think if you look at at a female farmer, she's less likely to be able to get away from her home duties to go to a market where you might find out information. It's also sometimes difficult in many cultures for a male extension agent, and most extension agents are male, to actually talk to a female farmer. And so it's, it's important, too, that we invest in having more female extension agents. And then lastly, female farmers are less likely to be literate and also to have access to a cell phone or a radio, for instance, to be able to have more information. So we think those are some of the ways that we can actually invest in female farmers, as you said. So you, you would look into programs that provide these tools, these technical means and, and all that information around getting it to them? Yes, we would do so. Mm -hmm. So GFRAS and the Global Donor Platform are, are somewhat similar animals in a way. The one is a forum, the other one is a platform. Um, so they, they live off, off, a, off that network character. Where do you see that added value um, for, for both of them? Uh, or working together in particular, but where's the yeah. that collaborative um, issue that's so important? I think the added value of forums like the GDPRD and of GFROS is that we provide that space for discussion of advocacy messages about the importance of rural development, the, the importance of agriculture, of advisory services, of gender issues, for instance. Um, before GFROS was formed, there was no body or there was no person at the global level to bring these issues to the table. We have um, GFAR for research, for instance, um, but we really had no body to bring extensions importance to the table and to provide these advocacy messages about why is advisory services such a critical institution and why should we invest in it. So the global platforms provide a place for people to bring these messages to the table. And also we provide the space for that different actors from the regional level to exchange their experiences. So when GFROS meets, we can have the African partners sharing with the Latin American partners, for instance, and to learn from one another. So that's the added value as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.